So we're here at Team Quest with the newest member of the UFC roster, Dan Henderson. Hey, Dan, thanks for the time. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing? Good. Well, last time we talked, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the deal had not been agreed to, but now it has your feelings. How does it feel to be back in the UFC, getting ready to fight in the octagon again? Uh, you know, it feels good to be back in the UFC, but, you know, I, I guess uh, I just love the sport, and, and, you know, I am... You know, nervous about uh, the future of Strike Force. I'd like for that to, to continue to be strong, and, and you know, was somewhat excited when the UFC purchased it, and hopefully they can uh, you know get some good TV deals and make that work as well. But you know, it's I'm a little sad that I don't know what's going to happen uh, with my belt. I haven't heard anything about that, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, let's start with Strike Force, and we'll work our way to the UFC. Looking back, what was the highlight for you during the time you were there? Uh, well, the highlight uh, definitely was was fighting and beating Fedor, for sure. Even more so than Fejo. Even more so than winning the belt. Even more so than winning the belt. I don't know. I just uh, I've always respected it, and you know the way Fedor fights and and uh, what he's accomplished in the sport. So that's always uh, you know I guess a better sense of accomplishment uh, to beat someone like that than it is to, to beat you know a, a really tough younger guy for the for the belt. You know, I know you don't like talking about your legacy, but tell me about the Strike Force legacy. If Strike Force does go away, as most people expect, what do you think Strike Force's legacy will be in MMA? Uh, you know, I think they were they were, they, you know, they they were coming on strong and, and starting to do real well. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if the history is there enough at that level to, to really give them a, a you know a solid legacy. But you know, I think. They definitely have made an impact in the sport and, and hopefully uh, still uh, continue to do so in the future. You were in Denver this past weekend. A bunch of things to ask you about that card, but but let me just start with being back at the UFC. I know you had been to the event, I believe, in New Jersey earlier in the year. Strike Force is a lot of fun. There's an energy, but, but being at a UFC fight, it's really unmatched. As you're sitting there ringside thinking, man, I'm coming back to this, Exciting? What's the feeling like for you, knowing, hey, in just a couple of months, this will be me? Uh, I actually wasn't thinking that at all. I was just enjoying the fights and watching them, and, and uh, you know, seeing how how it was. It was. Uh, I've been to these events for the last fourteen years, so it's. Yeah, I wasn't thinking that uh, this is going to be me in two months, but you know, it, it's. Uh, I know that they definitely have the biggest crowds, you know, out there right now, and. and do the best job as far as putting on a show so you know I am excited about that and, and to really uh, you know continue to, to strive and do better myself. Well that main event wasn't just another fight in that fight Rampage Jackson the guy you know well John Jones a guy who a lot of people say if you defeat Shogun Hua you could be up on that dance card for John Jones what'd you take away from John Jones performance this past Saturday night? Uh, you know I, I would love to match up match myself up with him one of these days whether it's for a belt or not he's just you know one of those awkward fighters that uh makes it funner to fight it makes it funner to, funner of a challenge it's not the same same type of challenge you know he, he has some some different uh tools that he uses and and you know it's always uh funner to figure out how to beat him was the altitude a factor for guys up there not just rampage but it, it seemed like it took effect on the heavyweights Think the altitude played a part in any of those fights? Uh, it looked to me like you know guys were a little more tired than usual, breathing hard, and, and uh, I'm sure the altitude affected them a little bit. Tell me about Shogun Hua. That fight is now official, November the 19th in San Jose, main event. Uh, never fought him in Pride, if I'm right. Uh, what is it about his game that concerns you? What do you have to do to win? Uh, Shogun's a, a tough fighter. He's been around a long time, and and. Uh, you know, he's been in there with some of the top guys and done well. And he's well-rounded, throws some nice knees and, and uh, some nice kicks. He's got some power in his punches, and, and uh, you know, he's just well-rounded. You know, with that being said, I think I'm, I'm better in every aspect than him, and, and, you know, I should definitely do well in that fight. Five round, even though it's not for the belt. You like that? <laughs> it is a five-rounder, but I think... Uh, you know, I think I'll be able to wear Shogun out, so it could be definitely an advantage for me. And then, have they told you anything, Dan, in regards to if you win this fight, 
seemed like they were talking John Jones, Rashad Evans, and you understand that Rashad's been out there for a long time. But if you get by Shogun, are you under the belief that you'll get the winner of John Jones, Rashad Evans? Uh, you know, I should have a title fight. And, you know, they were wanting me to fight uh, Anderson Silva my first fight back at the UFC, but he'd be about the only guy I'd fight at 185. And, and uh, you know, beyond that, I, I would hope that they would uh, would have tried to unify their belts right off the bat with me, but they're not. But who knows? You know, I'm not... Uh, I'm not the guy writing the checks or in charge, so you know I'm just out there to fight and and uh, do well and, and make sure that every fight I have is a big one. So you know that would be a big one, but there's a number of other fights as well that are big. Now, one thing that I don't think people understand is you keep yourself in phenomenal shape, and we're here September. That fight is still six, if not seven, weeks out. Not looking at the calendar. When will you really? amp it up if that even makes sense watching how hard you went at it today at Team Quest when do you really start amping it up for Shogun or is that process already started uh, it pretty much started last week but you know if you were at practice today you were probably watching me huff and puff a little bit I'm, I'm you know I got a ways to go but this is uh, just the beginning of my training camp I got about two months to go and you know I got a little tired today and I thought I felt like I was in Denver <laughs> How you, Dan? Do you enjoy this though? I mean, you're you're such a mellow guy, and you talk about that you can go to Denver and just hang out ringside and not really be caught up in anything. What is it about this game that you love so much? Is it the competition? Is it the actual fight itself? What is it that makes you keep getting back in the octagon? Nah, uh, you know, I'm good at it for one, and I love, I, I just love the challenge of it, and. Uh, you know, part of the challenge is learning and getting better and improving to beat these better guys and these younger guys that are coming up and that are quicker and maybe stronger and, you know, but they're, they're not better. And that's the key is just staying on top of uh, the evolving sport and, and staying with it and, and not being left behind in that manner and, and, you know, making sure my conditioning is where it needs to be. Health-wise, how do you feel? I mean, it, it's funny. We started this before the Shields fight. It feels like 100 years ago. And I remember there were back issues for you at that time. I don't know that you've had any issues since then. Health-wise, how do you feel today, say, compared to last time you were in UFC, prior to UFC 100? Uh, I guess fairly similar. It's, you know, I just, the back issues come and go. They, they've been there for the last 20 years. And, and you know, sometimes they flare up real bad, and sometimes it's, you know, I can get through a training camp pretty uh, pretty good, but you know, I'm I'm hoping to to get through uh, pretty healthy this training camp, and I, I've been doing pretty pretty good with that. You know, ever since my Jake Shields fight, I've just been really concentrating on not beating my body up and and still getting my uh, conditioning and weight training. In. All right, we'll end on a fun note. I I got an email this week from a guy named Chris in North Dakota. And he said one thing he notices is you're in either the octagon or the cage before a fight. He said you hit your legs a lot. He said you'll jump up and you hit your legs a lot. And he said, is there any meaning to that? I said, I have no idea. I don't know that I've ever noticed it. But I said, I'll ask the man himself. Dan, when you're jumping up and down hitting those legs, what are you doing? I'm waking myself up. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, it's something I've done throughout my wrestling career, even before I started fighting, just making sure I'm ready to go and getting the the blood flowing and the energy going and, and you know I'm pretty mellow but uh, I guess that's my cue to to get my ass moving. Well is that it because and and I promise this will be it but when we talk to people that are around fighters day in and day out you're a guy that always comes up is even fight day and on your way to the arena we always see the jokes when we watch the videos you're cracking jokes when you get there is that really when you turn that switch on? Because it seems like you're so relaxed almost through the entire process. When does that switch change from Dan Henderson, easygoing guy, to Dan Henderson, world champion? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think my warm-up definitely sets it off and, and gets my mind right where it needs to be, focused on, uh, on my game plan and what I'm going to do in the fight. And, and then you know, when I get out there in the cage, that's just an added uh, wake-up call, slapping my legs and jumping up a little bit and, and making sure I'm ready to go. I, I know that there was one fight where I smacked my face, too, which I used to do, and got, got Vaseline all over my hands. 
you know, so I quit doing that. Uh, and? But, uh, you know, pretty much uh, from the warm-up on, I'm ready to go. Yeah, as, as videos we have as you drop our pal Poncho, those videos are available on this channel. Hey, Dan, best of luck. Congratulations on the new deal with the UFC. It's good to see you back there, and we'll definitely talk again before the 19th. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff.